everyone, this video will demonstrate how to properly place and remove your surface barriers. In the dental office, the purpose of your surface barrier is to prevent contamination of your clinical contact surfaces. Depending on the office that you work in, you may use a lot of barriers or just a few. Some offices may only choose to barrier the operatory light. Other offices might barrier everything. So we have a wide variety here. We have barrier tape. We have small pouches for the air water syringes. Uh, they come in different types. I just have a wide variety here. We have large chair covers. We have headrest covers. Now, just because it says headrest cover doesn't mean I can only use it for the headrest. You could put anything that fits inside of it. So I'm in the treatment room with a variety of barriers. Follow your office protocol on what needs a barrier. As I mentioned, some offices may barrier almost everything. Well, a few may only barrier the operatory light, the keyboard, the mouse, and electrical items. Barriers should be placed with clean, dry hands. No gloves necessary unless your office protocol requires it. Barrier tape is great for certain items like your mouse and your operatory light handles and control panels. Tear it at the perforation. Then place it on your item. If you use barrier tape on your light handles, use a light touch when you place them. Don't squeeze them really tight, otherwise the tape will stick to itself and they'll be much more difficult to take off. Some offices are very conservative. They may only use barrier tape on the side that the operator is working. For example, if the hygienist is the only one in the room and the only one touching the light, they may only barrier one light handle. Here I have a barrier on both handles as well as the touch panel for the light. To attach the chair barrier, this is a full length chair barrier. It has a pocket on one side that slips over the back. And you pull it down over the entire chair. Some offices may only use a headrest cover. If they only use a headrest cover, you want to make sure to use barrier tape to keep your control buttons protected. So this type of chair sleeve protects those buttons. Other items that may be difficult to clean and harbor bacteria due to the buttons or levers on them are your air water syringes and your evacuation equipment. For your suction devices and air water items, we need a barrier with a hole in the end. If your barrier doesn't come with a pre manufactured opening, you'll have to tear an end off and then slip the item through the bag. What we are protecting with the barrier is the part that's permanent. The tip is disposed of. So this will be thrown out. So this doesn't have to be covered, but we want to protect the part that's permanent. The switch that could easily get saliva and blood around it, make sure that's protected. Here, all of the assistance devices have barriers on them. Don't forget to also put a barrier on the operator's air water syringe. Another item that needs a barrier in your office is the keyboard. If you're typing on the keyboard during patient treatment with your gloves, you need to put a barrier on it. To cover the keyboard, I'll take a headrest cover and I'll tear it down the seam, 
creating a long, flat barrier cover. And I can place that over the entire keyboard. So feel free to improvise with your barriers. As long as they cover the surface, it will be protected. Another item to barrier is your radiography unit. Remember, anywhere you're touching something with contaminated gloves during treatment can have a barrier. Other items that you might want to place a barrier on could be your writing utensils. If you write a lot during patient treatment, you can slip your writing utensil into a sleeve Make sure the tip pokes out the end, and then you can write with this with your contaminated gloves. The curing light also needs to be covered. To cover the curing light, don't poke a hole through this barrier. The curing light just shines a light. It can get through the plastic. The whole purpose of the barrier on this device is to keep the light free from the patient's saliva. Make sure your button that you're touching is covered. Your amalgamators will also need to be covered if your office chooses to do that. Barrier tape works great over the touch panel. Also consider placing a barrier tape on the lid. So when you go to open the lid, you won't contaminate it. The last item that needs a barrier is your x-ray control panel. This is outside the room and we're constantly touching it with our contaminated gloves. So let's place some barrier tape over that. Now that we have our barriers set up, we're ready to bring in the instruments for our patient and do our procedure. Now that the procedure is over and our patient has been dismissed, we can come back to the room and start to break it down. Because this is a cleaning procedure, we need to wear utility gloves. The instruments have already been taken to sterilization, so now I can remove the barriers. Be very careful as you're removing barriers that you don't touch the surface under the barrier that needs to remain clean. If you accidentally do touch the surface under the barrier, you will have to disinfect it. What I like to do is holding the device, kind of scoot the barrier up the device, put it back into the holster, and just continue to scoot the barrier off the item and remove the tip at the same time. These air water syringe tips, these are seal tight adapters. Push the yellow ring back towards the metal as you pull the tip out. Same thing with these other devices, just scoot the items up, put it back into the holster, and then pull the tip out. And you just continue throughout your room in this careful manner, removing the barriers properly. to set all of my barriers down in the patient chair because then I can wrap everything up when I'm done. The x-ray cover just either untie your knot or just rip the barrier off the machine being careful not to touch the x-ray unit underneath. Carefully take all your tape items off again being careful not to touch items underneath.
over here at the mouse and keyboard. Again, carefully lift up your items. Here at the curing light, just lift your sleeve off. Same thing with the tape on your amalgamator. Just carefully lift the tape off the items. Your writing utensil. Just carefully scoot the utensil out without touching it. And just let it fall onto the countertop. With all the room barriers removed, I can then roll up my patient chair cover. Starting at the foot, I just roll it so that the contaminated side is on the inside. With all my room barriers removed, I can then proceed to disinfect any surfaces I may have accidentally touched during this process and any surfaces that were not covered with a barrier. There is one additional item. If you remember, we did the x-ray control panel that's outside the room. Let's remove that barrier. This barrier is often forgotten because it is outside the room. Barriers have some disadvantages if you notice, this is just from one patient treatment. It's quite a bit of plastic waste, which is non-biodegradable. The variety of sizes and different types of barriers I needed to cover these items can be costly to an office. And with plastic draped over everything, it might not look the best, especially to your patients when they see all this plastic covering everything. But they do have their place. Use barriers for any items that are difficult to clean. Next step in the breakdown process is disinfection.